has always been a great kid, never in trouble. But his friends came over and I knew what they were doing, but it seemed harmless enough. But something started to change and his grades started to drop. Things around our home started to disappear. He started asking me for money. And the thing is, we worried about drinking, we worried about drugs, but gambling? One in 10 adolescents in New York State has a gambling problem. Get all the facts on adolescent problem gambling. Call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY. Hello, and welcome everyone who's viewing this uh, video training on gambling disorder, which is based on the DSM-5, the title of which is Risking Something of Value in the Hope of obtaining something of greater value. And I just want to point out that this training is based on the new Diagnostic and Statistical Manual 5, and I'll explain why that's part of the new chapter uh, on substance use disorder and addictive disorders. But I just want to uh, point out a couple of things about the DSM-5 uh, which I include in my training, of the training on the DSM-5. And it's just a couple of things that I, that, that I want to point out because I see people uh, m making mistakes uh, when it comes to this. And the first one is that the title of the manual is DSM-5 using the number 5, not the Roman numeral 5. And the reason that the APA did that was because they want to bring the DSM-5 into the new modern era of science and research. They want to get away from the old school thinking of using Roman numerals. So if you see, and I just got an email just yesterday from a, from a training institute within a hospital from a doctor saying training on the DSM-5 using the Roman numeral 5. So um, that is not the title of the manual as you can see. Now part of the mindset to that was that the World Health Organization and the APA collaborated on the two manuals, the DSM and the ICD-10, which is coming out any day, day this month. Um, the reason they did that is because the DSM is not used outside of the United States. No one uses the DSM, but they don't even use it in Canada. So the World Health Organization and the APA collaborated to use the same diagnostic criteria and the same coding so that the World Health Organization could, could keep their statistical data from a global perspective and um, using the same clinical criteria and coding. Uh, and the APA wants to be part of that. And the challenge for us as clinicians is that we want to be part of that too. With the same diagnostic criteria, diagnostic language, clinical language, and coding so we can keep the, the nature of the beast from a global perspective and people will be using the DSM outside of the United States and we want to be part of that challenge. I have picked up the challenge and hence I'm making this training on, the, on gambling disorder and I'll explain why that's in there. But I just want to point out something else uh, about the DSM-5. Um, the chapters I've reviewed counted the pages. I just want to note that our chapter, um, Substance Related and Addictive Disorders, Anxiety Disorders is uh, 46 pages, Obsessive Compulsive Disorder is 30 pages, Trauma, you know, other disorders 30, 40 pages, even Schizophrenia 36 pages. Substance and Related, Substance Related and Addictive Disorders, 110 pages. That chapter, our chapter for um, counselors, is the largest chapter in the book. Now, when you go to the chapter, Substance Related and Addictive Disorders, that uh, is actually this addictive disorder. Now, we want to get away from addiction because we're using substance use disorder now, and we're identifying the substance, each specific substance, substance with a separate code, uh, but it's substance use disorder, or alcohol use disorder, stimulant use disorder, and gambling disorder is part of that, and I'm going to explain the science and the research that was part of that. 
So those are just a couple of things about the DSM-5 that are included in my training on the DSM-5. But I want to make sure that everyone's on the same page as far as <laughs> number five and the new mindset uh, from a global perspective and how we want to be part of that. And then I'm going to explain the science and the research that moved gambling disorder into that chapter. And we need to be able to screen and, uh, uh, and our intakes uh, for gambling disorder so we can rule it out or identify it and identify high-risk patients because uh, this it's a trigger for relapse but there's also high-risk patients uh, for gambling disorder so um, it's all part of the training here and we'll, we'll explain that so if we're ready let's get started again this is presented by the Institute for Learning and Development my name is William Rule happy to be doing this, and I'm the executive director of the Institute. Okay, so, can we get, everyone in the back in here? Okay, so, ready? And here we go. Uh, 